Hey everyone, this is Rachel from Studio Us with another at-home art lesson for you guys. Today we're going to bust out some acrylic paint and make this beautiful rainbow pony. So go ahead and grab your supplies, we'll run through everything you need, and we'll get started. To start out, I've got a big piece of watercolor paper taped to my board. I'm going to use a drawing pencil, a sharpie marker, a couple of paint brushes, a big one and a small one, and then acrylic paint. So we're using yellow, pink, yellowy green, a dark turquoise, a light turquoise, a dark purple, and a light purple, a light blue, and also some white acrylic paint, as well as some glitter paint for the end. So to start out, I'm going to use my pencil and mark out the head shape for my unicorn. This is going to be kind of an oval. And I want it up in the top half of my paper, leaving enough room up top for the ears and more room down on the bottom for the body and the nose. Next, I'm going to get the nose in, so going off to the side, almost to the edge of the paper, curving it around. bottom nice and straight instead of rounded. From there I'm going to bring in the neck. This has a bit of an S curve, so it curves one way and switches back the other way. All the way to the bottom of the paper. And we can get the ears in, so I like to mark where it starts, how high up it goes, and where it ends. And then just sketch that in. Nice curvy triangle. Do the same for the other ear. bit smaller and a little curvier, so I'm going to make a couple little adjustments to get the shape just right. That's still looking a little too big, and it's going too high, so I'm going to bring it down. That's looking good. We'll also get a line inside that second ear to make it look more three-dimensional. Next, we're going to start on the hair, because we're getting some nice spirals. And what I'm going to do is dot these out so I can kind of see where I'm going before I draw it all the way in. So getting a spiral going underneath that front ear, starting from the middle of the head. There we go. We've got another piece of hair kind of curving out from the top of the head loops around a little bit, so we get a little spiky curl coming up on the front of the face. We're also going to add in the back of the neck, so following over, get a curved line. That's looking a little bit too high, so I'm going to drop the end of that curved line down a little bit, make it look like the hair's flowing downward. Here we're going to set up some curvy hair pieces going down the neck. We've got this nice S curve setting up our hair. And then we can sketch in another spiral to make the hair curl around. Just sketch in some little curly pieces coming along the sides. There we go. 
we've got our hair set. So we've got a little bit of erasing to do in the hair and on the neck to really shape out this one. So I'm going to take out a line along the chin and a line going through the ear. I always like to darken up the line where it ends so I'm really sure where it stops. Take out the line connecting the nose to the face and any lines going through our hair pieces. Take out the ear lines going through the hair. If you erase anything important, just draw it back in. And then down at the bottom, we've got a little line of the neck going through our hair, so we'll clear that out as well. So good, we're going to add in our eye. This is a long scoop. And then just a few eyelashes to add detail. And we'll get a little scoop for the nose too. And that's our horse drawing. So next we'll grab our Sharpie and just carefully go over all of your pencil lines. Make sure not to go over anything we erased. Really take your time, be careful on those pencil lines, try to stay right on top of your pencil. There we go, we'll grab an eraser, clear off any pencil lines hiding underneath our Sharpie, and then we're ready to paint. So to start out, I'm gonna use my large flat brush, take my dark turquoise color and paint in the whole background. Now I can use the flat side of that brush to line up against the edge line and really get right along that edge so I'm getting a nice clean line. of that brush right up against my Sharpie line and just dragging along to get right up on that edge. And then I can fill in the rest really easily.
finish up these last little details, careful to stay right on the edge of your lines, even in the small bits. And then anywhere where it's a little bit lighter and even, I'm going to just add a second coat to get nice thick coverage of that color all around. Alright, our turquoise is looking good. We're going to move on and get some light blue on our brush and start painting some of the shadows on our pole. So kind of following along the edges where the skin of the horse would be touching its hair, I'm going to add some very faint blue shadows. And with this I kind of blend it out onto the paper so I get a sketchy edge, not a firm line. So that's going to help me blend in later under the chin, along the back of the neck. Down under the chin and along the front of the neck. Making sure to blend as I go. A little bit under the nose some of the curly parts of the hair. We'll get up along the back edge of the ear. Under that front piece of hair, still blending out after I paint the color on. And then a little bit up on that ear. Our blue's looking good, so what I'm going to do is grab some white paint and without washing my brush I'm going to leave a little bit of that blue on the brush and then use the white to kind of blend that blue out into an even lighter blue so we get a nice transition between light blue, lighter blue, and the white of the horse's skin. So that's going to help kind of create these shadows and blend them out. And you'll notice I'm not going all the way over the blue, I'm just painting right where the blue touches the white part of the paper. I'm using very small amounts of paint here and just blending like crazy. To blend, you just lightly whisk your brush back and forth. Kind of wiggle that paint around and get a light dusting of it. Once we've got it all blended out, you can take white and just fill in the empty spot so everything looks even. We're all set with our white. So from here we're going to take a light purple and just work on painting some spiral patterns to fill in the background on top of that darker turquoise. So I sketch in my spiral pattern with the paint first and then give it a once over to make the line nice and thick. For some of the areas where the spirals would look like they're going behind a piece on our horse or on our background, we can just do a little partial spiral. You can see how I went through the ear there. Be afraid to change the directions of your spiral, make some upside down, make some going the other way. To 
really make it look like it's the background. Make sure they're kind of coming out behind pieces of our horse or out from the background. We don't want solid spirals going through the whole thing. Down near the bottom, we'll just get a couple little pieces. And just finishing up the last few little spirals going around in between those tiny pieces of hair. Once we've got those touched up, you can wash off your brush and we'll move on to our next step. So we're going to start out the hair. I'm going to use yellow to start getting the streaks in, but you can start with any color you want. Just using a small amount of paint, I'm going to kind of follow the edges of my sharpie lines to set up the first colored streak. You want to kind of treat each different piece of hair as a fresh start to set up this little rainbow pattern. So we're going to start with a streak of yellow on each little piece. I like to kind of start from at the top or the outside edge and then we'll work our way in. up our last little bits of yellow. Go ahead and wash your brush. The next color I'm going to jump into is our yellowy green. And just working inside each of the yellow streaks, putting it right next to wherever I put the yellow. I'm going to get every piece of yellow and get a nice thick piece of yellowy green next to it. Follow it all the way around. Got our last piece of green done. Next, we're going to move into the pink. So, wash your brush, grab your next color. Again, you can make any color pattern you want. These are just the colors I'm using because I like the way they look next to each other. And just like we did with the green, we're going to follow right next to where we put the green and create a streak of pink. Awesome, I would love to have hair this color. And we'll go ahead and add in that pink next to every streak of green. 
you get in a tight spot and you kind of fill it in, that's perfectly fine. You just won't put any color next to it once it's kind of filled the space in. Some of these little pieces, the pink will finish out the piece so we don't have to add any other colors. And if we've got a little bit left, we can leave room for just a little bit more of one more color. Just like this guy, that one's finished. streaks up at the top and we'll be ready for our next color. Good. I think I'll hop into the turquoise next, so I'm going to wash my brush, load up with paint, and start working in those turquoise streaks. I always love how turquoise looks next to pink, so it's a good color combination. Just following those along, and if I get in a tight corner, I can kind of fill it in, and that part's done. This one I'm going to loop all the way around. turquoise bits next to the pink. The top, I think I can finish up those top two bits with a little bit of turquoise along the bottoms. Right in next to that pink to fill in those white spots. Well, my turquoise went on really light, so I'm going to add a little bit extra to darken it up because I want it to be a little bit darker of a color find that your color is going on really light, that a lot of the white from the paper showing through, just add a second layer. This stuff dries super quickly. If you're working on a canvas instead of a piece of watercolor paper, you might need a little bit more time to dry. That's okay. Alright, we'll finish up with our paint colors. We're going to take our purple and go ahead and fill in any remaining white spots on our hair. Just like I did with the turquoise, since I want this color to look a little darker, I'm going to give it a second layer. Fill in all those purple spots nice and dark. There we go, we've got some awesome rainbow hair. To finish things out, I'm going to add a little highlight to my unicorn with some glitter paint. So this is just clear paint with a little flex of silver glitter in it. You can use any color glitter you want. I'm adding it to the cheeks, to the top of the nose, I'm going to add some down the middle of the neck, and a little bit on the white parts of the ears to make it look like it's got kind of a shiny, glowy highlight. If you wanted to, you could let the paint on your hair dry and add it to the paint, or add it to the hair make that hair look even more awesome than it already does. But I like to add it to the white to give it a nice shine. And a little bit up on top of that. Alright, so we're going to let the paint dry for a little bit. Then you can grab your Sharpie and 
carefully start going over your Sharpie lines. This is just going to redefine all of the lines we drew in in the first place, separate all of our chunks of hair, make it look really nice and neat. You might find that it's hard to get the Sharpie lines to go on smoothly. The paint's a little bit chalky that we're using today. So the Sharpie tends to get a little bit fuzzy, so really take your time. You can see me kind of wiggling my Sharpie over the same area to get a nice clean line. Whatever reason, it doesn't matter if you're using a brand new Sharpie or an old one, they always tend to get a little fuzzy going over its paint. The Sharpie will be fine once you're done. It's just a matter of getting it to go on smoothly over this kind of chalky paint. Make sure you're getting all of your lines. And if you find a wet spot, don't try to keep going over over it with the Sharpie. It will kind of mess up your Sharpie and make it harder to draw, so just let it dry a little more. Give it a couple minutes and then go ahead and go over it with the Sharpie again. You can always give it a little poke with your finger to make sure it's dry. I'm taking my time making sure I find every last little Sharpie line. Some of these are tricky to find tucked in all those swirls in the hair. Like we've got close to everything, we'll go ahead and get that eye in there. Get all our eyelashes. And then give one more check over to make sure you got all your lines. Looks like I missed one in the hair. And once you're done with your Sharpie lines, you are all set. Hope you guys had a great time, and we'll see you for the next one.